Hi, welcome to TheaterCast, presented by the EdReach Network, giving educators a voice, a big voice. You've reached episode number 53, being recorded April 29, 2014. This is the show where theater teachers and professionals share their passion for theater trends, share practical advice and tips, and ask questions of some of theater's most innovative collaborators. I'm your host today, Nick Cusimano. Danielle Pilas was unfortunately unable to join us today. Uh, but we have an exciting guest for you all that our friend from uh, the um, Miracle Worker episode, Darren uh, Butler, uh, connected us with, and I'm really excited to chat with her. Uh, she has a wealth of knowledge on the voice in so many different faceted ways of using the voice, <laughs> not only from stage, but in the recording studio and uh, how to use your voice for voiceovers and for singing and for acting and all different things, <laughs> um, all things vocal like the, the episode title says. So really excited to uh, chat with uh, Judy Rodman. And Judy, can you tell us just a little bit about uh, Meet Me Vida Loca? <laughs> your your um your interesting, crazy, uh, exciting uh, life, and um, just I mean, look. I'm I'm just exhausted looking at all the different things <laughs> that you've well, you know, done and the many different hats you wear, which I think is great <laughs> and exciting. Well, what I what I uh, have done is just you know been able to parlay different parts of my uh, of, of the music career that I've done you know I, I've just stayed in music and if you do that for as long as I have which is a number of decades now uh, you will do some different things <laughs> uh, you know I think the, uh, the 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 typical a length of a of a recording career. Uh, or a touring career is a, is maybe three years. Or it used you know used to be I think it may be less than that now on average. You know of course there's always the uh, the, the the ones that have been 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 around forever. But uh, just like the musical theater pieces that have been around for, forever, but most of them don't la are pretty much flashes and then they're gone. So if you're in music and or you know th whether it's theater or what whatever you'll find yourself needing to sort of be on roller skates a lot and that's kind of what I did and the people the musical theater people that I teach uh, are always looking for another way to kind of you know add uh, value monetarily to you know a career that makes money and also just satisfy their heart by keeping you know the the craft of singing going and giving them a reason to so anyway my, my career kind of went that way. I started out uh, singing, you know, with my family. I uh, have been singing really parts, harmony with my family since I was about two. So we, we just were an informal family group. My father was kind of an informal musician and, and so I've been singing my whole life. But when I was 17 I sang my first jingle. Then I became a, a jingle staff singer which is definitely paying dues but will also teach you the ropes about controlling your voice and changing your voice you know mm -hmm. uh, I, there I was they don't really have that 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 much these days but in those days we were doing like 70 percent of the world's jingles it was a company out of Memphis called the Tanner Company and so I was a staff singer there and then I started at night I would do uh, this was in Memphis again background vocals uh, for some of the uh, African-American uh, gospel stuff and 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 mostly it was that uh, which was just a trip. We we I sang some for Stax Records and and uh, uh, and Willie Mitchell and and uh, for on some R and B pop stuff. So I mean, really, it was such a learning experience. Uh, I also at the same time was in a cover band and doing all those great pop covers taught me so much about changing again, changing vocal tone and 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 changing voice, doing what it, finding things that made the voice work without me even really knowing what that was. So I had no idea the research I was doing for what I ended up doing. <laughs> I ended up doing now. And then I lost my voice and I had that experience of losing an octave and a half of my voice from an endotracheal tube which taught me the value of Italian songs <laughs> that I'd learned in, in, uh, in college. It, you know, it taught me the value 
because I got my own voice back mostly and then moved to Nashville with a professional coach named Gerald Arthur and got all of my voice back and then this is after losing an octave and a half of my voice I got a recording career you know I got back my session career I was doing all kinds of uh, rec uh, backgrounds on hit records uh, of the time with everybody and then uh, I had a hit career of my own had a number one record and all that and then so I had that experience and of touring you know in the big venues and the Tonight Show and all, you know, star, uh, Farm Aid and all those things, had that experience, then had the experience of completely getting dropped <laughs> and falling off the face of the earth because my label folded. So I know what that does to a singer and, and a vocalist. And I know now how I should have prepared myself better for that experience. Uh, that helps me, you know, it, it, now it helps me help other people do that. Then, uh, I focused on songwriting, and then I had a number number one hit by Leon Rimes that I had co-written with someone. Did started doing a lot of production because I had to produce my a lot of my own songs uh, in my songwriter catalogs with Warner Chapel and Chrysalis and all that. And then uh, somehow in the process of that, my songwriting career sort of took a dive, and I thought to myself, well, what else can I do? And I thought, okay, organic gardening. And then somebody, somebody from the Leonard Skinner band named Carol Chase asked me how to hit a note. She knew I knew how. I don't know how she knew. That thought, you know, put a thought in my head. Well, maybe I could teach voice. So I started doing that. And when I put the ad in the paper, the voice vocal lessons garnered a whole lot more response than the organic garden plans. <laughs> So I started doing that, and then I started in doing that. I found out, well, okay, what do I know? What do I know that works? And I started digging into my own experience, and then getting really ravenous for uh, others, uh, you know, training from other. I, I, I dug into other vocal training methods, talked to doctors, double teamed with Alexander Technique practitioners, talked to my chiropractor, talk, you know, all of that. Everything I've done in my career came in to uh, teach me how to be a vocal coach, and I had no idea I'd be, end up doing it. But my, it's almost like a tapestry, all of these you know, things, these threads that have run through my career really affect each other. And now I'm on to produ uh, production of other artists. Uh, I use all of my, uh, my uh, techniques and everything and my recording experience to produce people in the studio and I've had a, a lot of success I've, I've got some really exciting projects that are coming up and um, I also have written a couple of musicals with Darren <laughs> as far as the music goes and I've had the experience of directing a cast and realizing that what I have learned to do in the studio and on stage uh, in my career and, uh, and, and all it has is absolutely valid and applicable to both musical theater and public speaking which means acting voiceovers all you know all the things that we do as, as speakers so and everything keeps going so I have no idea what I'm gonna do tomorrow right now I'm talking <laughs> right now I'm talking to you <laughs> uh, I, I I think it's really amazing how you think that artists, actors need need to realize about the business that you you do need to see what your talents are, know what they are, and how can you change them, use them, connect. Uh, all those different things, and I don't think we realize all the talents we really have till life says, "Oh, well, here's this little side turn. Here, make some lemonade. Exactly. <laughs> or, or, or open up this new door you didn't know was going to open." <laughs> and right, I, the brick I, walls will come. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that I'm just amazed by all the different things that you're able to, and just um. And all of 
to all the knowledge that you have, and I'm kind of excited uh, what you can share with us, some of the different techniques that uh, you've been able to uh, discover and hone and share with people. Um, sure. So what's w one of those things... What's one of those things like when you first get a new client? What's the first thing that you kind of help let, them I'll, discover, or what? What is kind of that process? Or yeah, yeah, that that's a great question. Um, this is sort of I used I started out just teaching people what I they I I just knew they needed to know. I've what I've learned to do is dig into who they are and what they want to know, or if they don't want to know it yet. I convince them because it helps them do what they want to do, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. my, 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 my modus operandi is this. Almost with uh, every student, uh, new, new client that comes in for vocal lessons, the first thing I'll have them do is fill out a questionnaire, which uh, the, sec uh, the second page of it asks things like, do you have chronic muscle tension? You know, do you have problems uh, uh, with... Uh, uh, in any spinal alignment problems? Do you have emotional problems? Do you have uh, uh, you know panic attacks or anything like mo emotional, uh, physical, nutritional? Uh, what are your nutritional? Uh, at, what are the characteristics of your mm -hmm. life? You know, uh, and, and then because that helps me help them right away. But after they fill out that that thing, which doesn't take that long, but it's pretty. They, it usually surprises them. At what affects the voice, you know, mm -hmm. uh, everything, all of that does. Anything that affects your body or your mind is going to affect your voice. So then, the first thing I have them do after that, they hand me the questionnaire, their pop quiz they filled out, <laughs> is I have them sing for me. I have them sing. I, I've asked them to bring when they called me for the in initial lesson. I've asked them to bring a, a, a really easy song and a hard song. And what I do is I ask them, I said, now, in your, in your regular experience, in the experience you've had so far, what do you do the most habitually? And so an important question, like, are you more comfortable in the studio? Have you done more in the studio? Have you done more live? Well, if it's live, do you hold a mic? Do you just work with a stand with the mic? Do you work with a headset? Or do you uh, mostly audition a cappella? You know, it, it, all of those things matter because what we do with our hands, uh, where our posture is, how you know we're using our, you know, our limbs even, matters to vocal control. So whatever they, their their most familiar thing is, I'll have, that's what I'll have them do. If it's studio, I'll set my mic up like that and, and they can't touch the mic, I'll set it up on the stand and they'll pretend mm -hmm. that the pop filter's there. But whatever it is, I'll, uh, and I say, the only instruction after that that I give them is, I say, don't sing to me, sing out my window to the person that you usually sing to, you know, the audience you usually sing to. Just like you do, let, just let me be a fly on the wall and let me just watch you be on stage and give me the body language or you know move or don't move in the way that you normally do I could in 15 seconds I know what their weakest link is I know what their strength is from from just you know just a little bit mm -hmm. of the first verse usually if they get into the chorus I'm sure of it <laughs> you know so <laughs> it, it's uh, it, it tells me everything and then then the next thing I do is I have to I know that my job for someone, they shouldn't trust me. You should not trust a vocal coach until that vocal coach has proved themselves to you. So I try to do that as quickly as I can. Uh, I'll ha I'll see whatever the weakest link is, and I'll say, now, I just want you to change this thing, and then I want you to tell me if you notice a difference. And I'll have them change the most important thing in one way or the other, and then they'll look at me like, how did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, then I know I've got them, <laughs> and, then, and then we go from there. And I tell them, if 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 it's a nine one one where they're going into uh, an incredibly important gig or audition or mm -hmm. studio session, then we have to get right to it. Uh, if it's not, I'll I'll back up. And well, I don't like to put band aids on things. I really like 
to get back to the like how do you run air across your vocal across your vocal cords and how do you shape it and I like to work with anatomy and all that so if there's time I'll really dig into that but if there's not I'll make the quickest difference I can uh, that will affect their very practical needs at, at that time so well that sounds like a, a great start um, I know you have your um, program which is yes. the um, power path and performances. Right. Um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about that and kind of what it is? And um, because we, some of us can, uh, of course, reach you by Skype or maybe now Google Hangouts or. Yeah. Uh, virtually or in person but um, if that's not a possibility you have that program to help uh, people through the process. So I sure you... do. Yeah. Well it's uh, Power Path and Performance is a method of teaching voice and what you're talking about are the CDs that I created uh, I, I mean I use focus groups and everything to try to make sure that it was actually it actually made the difference that I wanted to make so that when you know and people have bought it all over the world that that package I've got a, a pretty cheap package it's an introductory thing like 20 uh, mm -hmm. 1990 mm -hmm. 19, Nine. 19 Nine. yeah for for the for the digital download to make it accessible for anybody the the professional course the full 6 CD course is 99 uh, and uh, that can be you know you can study that for a lifetime and every time you listen to it and dig into it you get it you get you know, trained at, a, at an even deeper level. But the method itself that that's a product of, you know, that I teach, I teach, I produce, I do everything vocally, whether it's speaking, singing, studio stuff, live stuff, it's all based on power, path, and performance method. You know, any, as far as methods go, there's speech level singing, there's, you know, the Levitri method, there's you know all kinds of different methods that teachers have named through the, in, the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. What I always, uh, and the best teachers that I know and network with, I love networking with great teachers, but uh, the, what we say is if we see a great singer uh, performing, we better see our method and what they're doing because it is a human voice and it only works one way. But my addition to the body of uh, vocal training is this synergy of a three-stranded chord, and that is what I what I discovered uh, when I when I was teaching at the, at the beginning, and I was looking for this some kind of coherent thing that would work for everybody, even though people were coming to me with such different issues, you know, and and different uh, uh, abilities. How I, I tried to ask myself, what works for everybody? What does everybody need? Uh, and I I just it just kind of came together this thing where everything I know about the voice can fit within either breath throat or performance meaning communication not you know what we think of performance but performance meaning physical and psychological aspects of communicating uh, those three areas and I, I used alliteration and named it power of the breath path the path your voice should take Mm -hmm. an open throat rather than a tight throat and then performance so and it's not only a logical sorting of information it's synergistic so if I get if I see someone who's got a problem with breath they're sabotaging their throat their, their throat is not going to be open and that's sabotaging their performance because you know they can't quite commit to it because they're always wondering if they're going to be able to hit that note or trash their voice or whatever you know mm -hmm. if if someone has a psychological problem with not knowing which I can't tell you how many people have that problem that come into me not knowing what they're supposed to be doing I mean I, I've, I've had I've had people say uh, to me uh, you know I've asked the, I always ask the question okay who are you singing to I had one precious lady who was singing uh, Amazing Grace. I said, who are you singing that to? Who are you supposed to be singing that to? And she thought about it and she said, Michael Jackson. It, no. <laughs> no, it's not Michael Jackson. And I know, I know what she meant. That, that was such a, it, it was such a blessed 
uh, vocal lesson with her because when we laughed about it because when I let her understand no you're supposed to be talking to someone about your experience your spiritual experience you know that's who you're supposed to be talking to but she she just loved Michael Jackson she knew that song was about love and she knew it was about passion, but she wasn't able to focus it up. Mm -hmm. And so and so she was nervous because her voice, you know, the words that were coming out of her mouth and the person she seemed to be aiming those at didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And so she was confused. And most people that come into my office to one level or another, or to one, you know, uh, it, it, they're confused about who they're supposed to be singing to. And you, that usually manifests in either nervousness or numbness, or they overdoing everything, and they're smiling on a sad song or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's acting technique. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I had just enough acting to be dangerous. <laughs> but uh, it really is acting technique. You've got to know who you're talking to, yeah. and what you want the response to be. So anyway, so if someone's not doing that. They can be singing with great breath and great open throat and all that, all the rest, but they're not going to make an impact. They're not going to mm -hmm. be, you know, getting the heart to listen of yeah. the listener. So it, it, it's synergy, the synergy yeah. of breath issues, which is breath is a, uh, the breath thing is a balance of breath support and breath mm -hmm. control. And then the open throat, they've got to know what affects the throat being open or throat being tight. And that's going to affect vocal strain. It's going to affect vocal, and uh, it's going to it's going to affect response. Uh, and then you know that so that's affecting performance. So it all goes together. That's power path and performance. <laughs> <laughs> that well, help? And I th oh yes, I think and I think that performance, especially I know I deal with as a high school theater teacher. You know, you've got students just going on beginning their journey yeah. and, and I think it's just always reminding them what is the song conveying what uh, what do you who and who are you singing to and I think mm -hmm. it's always just a little bit of a challenge if you can get them to tap into that because if you always put it on the other person and getting something you want a response a reaction one it takes it off them and they have something to do and with having that in there, then it, get, it takes away the nervousness. It's it does. Not about, it it's does. not about them. It's about what they want that other person to do. Right. And, 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 and the going song, right, go, going the song right and the voice is the way to achieve that. <laughs> right. And going right along with that concept is the concept of don't break character. You know? don't. I mean, if you're in the middle of a performance... Don't break character in the middle of like when during the instrumental. Don't start mm -hmm. like fidgeting with your hands. And uh, if you're singing background on stage, you know you got to be right present with that mm -hmm. song the whole time, even background. If you are, I mean, musical theater people surely know not to break character when it, they're mm -hmm. not when the spotlight's not on them. It's important for everything that we sing or say in in yeah. any performance that we have. Because audiences are smart, they they know when. They oh, know even, what, yeah, they, even even little kids are smart. They know yeah. if mom is talking to them or if she's distracted by something. Yeah, human human beings are, you know, it's it's that nuanced uh, mm -hmm. thing about communication. Yeah, which I think is, I love the singing voice. I wish I had mine. <laughs> uh, uh, it's uh, faded over the years. Let's put it that way. I can teach you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I still love, you know, the physical act is just, it's so gratifying and so much fun, and I think it would be fun, and I wish I could, you know, during my summers, okay, let me go two weeks tour with the rock band and sing backup, because I think <laughs> it would just be fun, because, you know, it, when you have that interplay between the audience and the artist, it's just... It's one of yep. those special things, and um, if people want, um, I recently watched it, uh, 20 Feet from Stardom uh, about backup singers that won yes. Oscar this year, yeah. um, and just, you know, it's just very interesting to see that, but you saw, I mean, all those people 
and I'm sure you, I'm sure you probably have sung with some. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. Some, if you some of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Who are on there and just just that magic thing that happens with performance. I think it's definitely yeah. um, something powerful. And you know, everybody everybody needs to be heard. Uh, that's the reason for music therapy. Even um, the reason that we do what we you know anybody in the arts, it, it's a difficult business model, <laughs> <laughs> and if to say the least. But there's that there's the need, you know, to be in in that whatever the the creative act is, whether it's acting, you know, in, in musical theater or or film, uh, or or singing or painting or whatever, it's that creative part of the human being that needs to express itself. And the thing is that in the in these days of American Idol and the music business and all of the accoutrements that go with that, mm -hmm. uh, we've kind of gotten away from what the voice is supposed to do, which is deliver messages and get an emotional response from that message. So when we get back to that, we, we need to always tell my people we need to do both uh, music and music business very well to be successful, but, but they're not the same. And the best thing is when the music business is driven by the music being done correctly, and in our cases, as voices, we did our job. We created an emotional response by the sounds coming out of our face. Yeah, and that, it, it's just, I think, I think that's what attracts people to the arts and to singing, and is is those special connections that we're able to make through the act of singing or communicating and those right. type of things. Um, what would, since you have so many different areas, <laughs> um, which I think is a great thing, if someone's, what is your best advice if someone's on stage um, and how to use their voice and then maybe talk to us about using your voice in the studio situation also. Okay. Uh, on stage, the important thing is to be able to hear your voice well enough that you don't push. Bo your power, you know, your power as an artist uh, or background singer or whatever, but your power of your voice is the power of resonation of a message. That's literal and uh, uh, psychological. So if you push, even a rock, even rock singers are taught to pull, in, you know, uh, to uh, open their throat instead of tighten their throat and make that yelly sound. So it's important to hear that. That's why I like in in ears for performers. But wedges are what I always used, the wedges, and just to make sure that you can hear yourself. Uh, the other thing is to know who you're talking to. There's a little trick that I use. If the spotlight's in your eyes, and you are supposed to be, you know, communicating to the audience, mm -hmm. uh, some song, story songs, and things like that, you know, they aren't to a person; they're to the the audience. But I say make it to the composite heart of the audience. Don't try to talk to all of them. Talk to one composite heart or one audience member at a time. Well, when the spotlight's in your eyes, you can't see anything but whitewash. So I've got had a little trick of, of picking out a spot that's just about where I think the chairs are and interacting with that spot like an actor would with Roger Rabbit, you know, with, mm -hmm. a, with a virtual character, making that spot real to me and interacting with it, you know. And that, oh, that so works. And then I'll move the spot over here or move it to the balcony or wherever. Uh, if you can see people... Then uh, you got to just be. It, it, you got to understand: is this song to the audience, or is it for the audience? Such as Taylor Swift singing the song "Mean." For the, the, those of you that don't know what that song is, it's like someday, I uh, someday uh, I'll be living in a big old city, and all you're ever going to be is me. Well, that's not to the audience, hopefully. <laughs> but it's it, it's for the audience. It's to a bully 
for the audience. And that's such an important distinction for people to know. Now, if you're a background singer singing with an artist, you've got to be thinking the same thing. You've got to be just adding your texture to that message, to that it goes to that person. So hopefully that helps. And also singing from the stage, try to sing from your heel, not the balls of your feet. And you'll find yourself being able to open your chest up better, which gives you better breath control. Uh, and uh, and we'll open up your throat better. All right, in studio, I'm gonna, uh, I think I'm going to show you how to set up. The biggest issue uh, that I see with un knowledgeable studio singers is uh, where how how to set themselves up at the mic because most engineers don't know okay so let me show you that I'm gonna take these sure. out so I won't hear you for a second mm -hmm. and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull up my stand and I'll show you okay okay let's see so if I'm in the studio, we'll pretend this is a studio mic, and I wouldn't be able to touch that. There'll be a pop filter right there, right? Mm -hmm. So the way you would set up, you know, that normally you're set up with the with the music stand right in front, like that, <laughs> and you are gonna you're gonna be leaning over like that, okay? That's going to cause your rib cage to come in. It's also going to cause your throat to be tight. Your voice is not going to work as well. Usually your hands are down here like this, which gives you what I call rib anchors. <laughs> uh, can you hear me, Nick? Okay. Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, I'm watching you not. Okay, so what you want to do is move the stand to the side. If there's a cue box, move it to the side so you can walk in. All right? Make sure the mic is high enough pop filters, about like that, and it's usually hanging, you know, this way. Mm -hmm. uh, then you're going to use what I call studio hands. This, is, this works great. You press your fingertips into each other, and uh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Okay? Uh, so this is, I'm using this with my lyrics. Uh, it's and, and when I go for a harder note, the, the harder the note is, the wider my, my chest is, and the more open my throat is. The throat opens up, down, and back. And and so uh, that's that's a real ninja trick for the studio. And then again, the other thing about the studio is, who are you singing to? Well, <laughs> it better not be the control the control room because usually the person you're supposed to be singing to is not there. So and that uh, so orient have the engineer orient your mic, uh, orient you so you're not facing the control room, watching the watching the engineer you know do like that because he's gotten some kind of control wrong and you think he thinks that you suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, just orient. It's very distracting when you think they you think the control room thinks that you suck. So move it to where you can. I even sometimes put like a piece of tape. Uh, don't sing to the mic, sing through the mic to the person the lyrics are to, you know, to whom to whom the lyrics are directed. So hopefully that helps. No, that's great advice because I think, um, at least on the theater end, the studio is not something that you go into every day. Um, right. Person, right. You know, it's just one of those things where... If you're lucky enough to be in an original cast and you're lucky enough that the money's there to record it and you yeah. have maybe a day to maybe, you know, if you're lucky enough and they have a big enough budget, maybe a week, um, you need to know the best and easiest ways to get in there and do what you need to do and do it well. Yeah, because, and if, if you... it's just so expensive when you record. Exactly. Time is money. If you use your hands, uh, you can either do this or you can just talk with your hands like you would on stage. You know, do what makes it work. But all I know is that the cast recordings I've done with Darren, this this hands business and where you position your head farther back so it opens up your chest and opens up your throat made all the difference in the world, not only in the sound, 
but in the pitch control, you know, of, of the singers. So even if you're in a semicircle, you know, doing a group mm -hmm. thing uh, with stereo mics and stuff, you can do this. You can use your hands. You kind of have to be careful not hit somebody. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's what they do. <laughs> Well, I think that's really great advice. Um, sometimes what I, I'm i dealing with a lot, and maybe a lot of people out there are too, is that that voice that, you know, when you have the, the students who you can't hear on stage, What what's some of your best tips to help people open up and project and but not strain because that it is a balance to find it, it is and, and the way <laughs> what what I always tell people is never sing louder than your instrument can resonate but what we can do is as give them uh, the uh, ability to use this compression breath that I I say it's I, I teach people that the power center people need to be using to power their voices. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of times, people that don't sing loud enough don't power their voices from anywhere, and so it just kind of comes from here out. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you center your power in your in your uh, in your rear end, okay, <laughs> and you know, I mean, it's just the truth. You know, there's mm -hmm. a phrase they say, "Sing your butt off." Well, that's exactly mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do. Not, don't sing from your ribcage. Sing from the saddle. Just like riding a horse downhill. And if you squeeze your butt, you'll notice that your abs come in, but your ribs come out. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and so you'll get both good breath uh, up, which is breath support, and you'll also get good breath control because your diaphragm will be as wide as it can be from a real wide the rib cage will be stretched wide. So, uh, you know, a sing from the lower, sing from the, the saddle, that's one thing. And the other thing is to open up the resonating, or uh, open up the throat channel so the, the vocal vibration can reach the uh, alternative resonation surfaces. You know, it, and so that has a lot to do with where how tall you are. I like I like to poke people in the upper back and uh, and make them really tall. And then all of a sudden you'll notice it's like I use the analogy of a puppy. If a puppy is uh, being challenged by a mean dog, the body language is tight and kind of crunchy. And so you can hear my voice change, okay? And of course, that that can come in wonderfully if you need to be auditioning for the part of the uh, lollipop kids, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if I uh, if and and my and my voice is being powered from high up in my from my rib cage and really coming from a high place. But if I move my head back, ah, uh, uh, even if I even if I keep it the same pitch, ah. Uh, you can hear the tone change. Mm -hmm. So a big, uh, uh, so a small, do uh, a dog that is uh, afraid is going to crunch itself in, and that's going to result in a thin, a thin, weak, high pitched sound. A dog that's uh, not afraid, that it, it maybe the litter mates coming in challenging him for the king of the room position, is going to be open chested, open, and the head's going to be back. And open, and any animal that does that, from a lion to a gopher, you know, is going to have a bigger voice. Wow, what a concept! So power that open throat, resonate because you know who you're talking to, and you're going to find that 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 singer with a bigger voice. Mm -hmm. You know, give them the confidence yeah. of knowing what their voice is doing. Who who are they supposed to be communicating to? That's usually the biggest issue. If I'm supposed to just be making a loud so noise, well, I can yell, but I don't want to. But if I'm really supposed to be, you know, making somebody feel something, I could do that. And usually, even the weaker uh, singers, they, 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 if they, if they get in touch with that, they give themselves permission to be louder. And there's no strain involved in that. Um. I get pa passionate about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I think uh, also another thing they run into um, working with young performers is it's show weekend. They use that both the strain and the um, uh, the tired voice um, mm -hmm. and just. And I think we were talking earlier before today um, some ways of helping people kind of avoid that. Oh, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, definitely learn good vocal technique and w warm up the vo warm up the voice carefully. You know, bubbles or trills. Or but pulled, not pushed. Not but so you almost, it's almost mm -hmm. like in inhaling the bubble instead of exhaling. Mm -hmm. So a vocal technique, warm up. Uh, the other uh, a, a thing, you know, f sleep is kind of non-negotiable. Hydration is non-negotiable. Okay, you can get by with a lot of stuff, but those two things you really gotta have. Uh, a, a, a really wonderful 911 that uh, is pretty much universally available at your nearest grocery store, or sometimes. Uh, even a, you know, a little corner store, is pineapple juice and water, uh, like a, a very dilute uh, concentration, like 25% pineapple juice, the rest water. You wouldn't believe how soothing that is to the throat for speakers too. But uh, that there's a an enzyme. I've talked to other vocal coaches and some doctors about it, and the only thing it's kind of a mystery, but I. The only thing we can come up with is there's an enzyme in the pineapple that's not in any, anything else. Huh. And it's not about drinking a lot of it. It's just about letting it soothe the tissues of the throat. I found out about it when I had to do two days of uh, vocal sessions in another state. Couldn't be rescheduled. I drove down. It was just a state away. And I drove down, or maybe it was two states away. Drove down with and and in the process of driving down had laryngitis you know all I mean complete as long as I I, I just by a, by accident picked up a Dole's pineapple juice thing and put it in my 13 ounce glass of water just to some flavor and that did something nobody's I mean everybody was I think there were nine singers of us that I was leading the group and had arranged mm -hmm. the vocals and everything and nothing worked but this pineapple juice as long as I was using it I could even get in my head voice. So I, I use that with people uh, all the time. And hmm. uh, it, it's uh, the other th another thing, my sister calls it fire water, uh, <laughs> is uh, water, uh, cayenne pepper, and lemon juice. Believe it or not, that's, that's, uh, the cayenne pepper, pepper is very uh, healing for the mucous membranes. Huh. So well, that's, that's um, a great little. Um, Bit of, them, of information. <laughs> oh, there's a ton, I, and, and I've got I've got a ton of information about lots of lots of tricks and things like that on my blog that people can find mm -hmm. free, and also my uh, website. The sign up bonus has a five page report full of things like that. <laughs> well, that that's just I think it's <laughs> so could be, could be the thing. little uh, yeah those little tricks because now I know what to. Uh, to share next time we have a show, <laughs> and I know what to drink on the first day of school because that's always when I get vocally tired. Yes. I do so much talking yes. on the first day of school. Yes. Another thing uh, that's very, very good for speakers and singers, and speakers especially, is to su make sure they're supporting their uh, vocal sounds with air. What happens a lot is that at the end of what we're saying or we're singing, we drop the support out from under. And I call it hitting gravel. Uh, it's a vocal fry epidemic, like, uh, you know, that, that thing where we end up like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I use tongue tanglers. I have three pages of them. And I use tongue tanglers and I make the goal, number one, to say it correctly, but number two, not to ever hit the gravel. The first one is, you know New York, you need New York, you know you need unique New York. And I, and to the probably 100% of the people when they first say it, they're going to at least end the last York on the gravel. You know, mm -hmm. you know you need unique New York. 
your, your. <laughs> if you put your hand there and you feel for that, your. No. <laughs> It'll make you allergic to it really quick. So New York, and then uh -huh. you add you add air to the very end of it. So eleven benevolent elephants, not fence, fence. So you add, you know, you relift the end of your speaking phrases. And here's the thing: it takes more physical energy and more emotional energy too, but not the throat won't feel a thing. And that's why that's how I teach public speakers, teachers, uh, uh, directors, all kinds of, of uh, ministers. You know, uh, voiceover people. Uh, the the I teach them in and what uh, to completely eliminate strain by eliminating vocal fry. And yeah. that that stuff just That's goes a ton. You know, so the power is coming from. Your low core, your your saddle area, just like it is for singing. And you'll want to eat something afterwards, but, but you'll feel voc <laughs> vocally you'll feel great. Well, and if you can avoid that strain, I think that makes life much easier on you, and um, and it doesn't make you as tired. Just a little hungry is not bad. Yeah, yeah. It, it's even it, if you think of that. Living in, and I'm working hard. Yeah, uh, it, you can even think of it as inhaling words instead of exhaling. It's the pull. I call this singing and speaking pulling vocal sound instead of pushing it. Uh, uh, you know, it's mm -hmm. like instead of blowing air forward, uh, I I have people act like you're almost like you're making the river run backwards. And uh, and that will that gets that that makes you center your power in a lower place. So it's it's like if you if you go yeah 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 who you know instead of yeah who 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 that's a good pulling exercise. Oh, uh, that's really um, yeah. We can just. I just want to now sit up straight and make sure that I support my voice. Support my voice feel better. Like. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I do think we get in our habits very easily. Oh, yeah. It's always mm -hmm. the best point to make that part of your technique. Right. It's just something you just... It's just so easy. To, to make it a new habit for yourself, then, right. then it makes your... Communication so much easier, and connecting with people, and getting your message across uh, instead yes. of you know, if you're sitting down like this, then I can feel the vocal strain. But if I sit up more and think of you know that pulling it out, then yes, it's much easier, and I'm not straining my voice. It's easier I, and, and, uh, and more I think, effective. And I think what. Always the challenge is, is what happens when you get tired. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> and, and then you have to up, make a choice. The, Acting yeah. is about choices, yeah. so it's singing. <laughs> um, you have also um, one of your interesting things, which I think is uh, kind of a great way and um, kind of exciting and a little bit low tech, uh, but kind of cool is your earphones. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. I, Absolutely. I, I can say after doing 53 plus how many other hangouts I've done, I've gotten a lot less, a lot less self-conscious about recording my voice. But uh, yeah. I'm getting used to it. Do you want me? To, my, and, and that's my voice. But I think. Do you want me to show you that? Yeah, you can show me that. Because they're really kind of interesting. Um, so I can hear myself like like it's like a clean mic I mean it, you, it's amazing and this is the only way you know what you really sound like and unless you hear yourself recorded and played back uh, and, and this really teaches you the nuances of the tone that you're using and if you're using thin, tight, you know, rib cage heavy tone, 
or if you're using bell lights, it, uh, it uh, also teaches you how to push because you'll deafen yourself. You can even change the volume by moving it up and down. It's a cool gadget uh, created by a couple of people who've become friends of mine in Maine, of all things. He was a choir director, and the other guy was a tech guy, and they just came up with this gadget. So, uh, but I use it with well, I, I I use it all the time with people. And it's a great rehearsal tool right. for acting, for speaking as well. Because it gives you a sense of how it's you're not hearing it through your head through other people. Yeah. Right, right. It'd be, uh huh. It'd be a great way to, you know, uh, uh, to practice lines too. Besides yeah. singing. Yeah, I think um, that definitely gives you that extra um, tool in your toolbox because I think, you know, when actors, performers get out there, it's you. It's you. You, you are it. And you need to know your instrument so that mm -hmm. you know, oh, I want to play this note, <laughs> or I want to communicate this way. Then, if you know, if I'm playing a really boisterous character, then you know I have to open up my voice and make it bouncy. Or if I'm playing, you know, or you know, if you go more nasal and just, how is that going to sound to other people? That's a great tool to have in your arsenal because you know. We know really with 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 the business part of show, it's whatever you can use to help you that that just makes you more marketable. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, I was gonna share the screen real quick just to show uh, all of, some all the different things that uh, you can uh, find out about. Judy. Um, we've talked about the PPP vocal training, um, or PowerPort, not uh, PowerPath and performance vocal training CDs. Uh, and you also have the singing in studio multimedia course. Sounds like right. you're able to share those techniques because I think there's so many multifaceted things that you know, we see a lot with the voice and American Idol. I mean, that's definitely a way to get into the business, and I think some people think that's the only way to get into the business, and I don't agree with that, but I know uh, that it is something that we see in pop culture um, that is kind of a... But I think they need to understand those techniques. Yeah, I suspect. And, and I think that's yeah. something that just off, you know, oh, I want to be a singer. I want to be a pop star. Well, <laughs> okay, that's great. But, you know, how are you going to, you know, what is touring like? How do you take care of your voice? Um, how do you sing well? How do you, you know? think, even? How, how do, do you, you think? think? And... How you know? What is the studio process? And I, right. you know, I think, yeah, we can watch a TV show, but and that's only going to show two minutes of someone recording a song. But I think you're able, with with that product, is give us here's the nuts and bolts of how it's done. Because you know, I see all the sliders, but what do they do? I don't know. Right. Oh yeah, it, it's a specialty. Uh, it's a it's a specialty uh, singing thing because there's nothing else like singing in the recording studio. It's kind of a fake atmosphere. You know, you don't have the audience there. Mm -hmm. It's about you have to be perfect because the mic stuff is so sensitive. There's lots of reasons that it's difficult, but there are workarounds to make it possible to do even better vocals in the studio than you can live, and not have to be completely you know like fixed all over the place. So, uh, yeah, it's it's there's a, a lot that goes into the studio singing that unless you've been doing it 40 years, you wouldn't know. Yeah. We lost a little bit of that with um, ah. Wi-Fi issues. So, um, you could rephrase <laughs> that last well, little bit. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's just unless you've been singing 
for four decades in the studio like I have in producing other people, there are some things that you just wouldn't know. It's an artificial kind of place to sing in the vocal mm -hmm. booth. And no, the person that you're supposed to be singing to is usually not there. You have to be perfect you, or try to be as perfect as you can and as magical as you can because that's the final vocal. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it's not conducive to that unless you know these things. So it's there's a lot of particularly unique uh, con uh, aspects to singing in the studio. Um, are there favorite things that you or that you found um, using either technology or computers that you found that kind of help the process or ways of uh, tips and tricks? Or, or just even just communicating, and I mean, you're pretty tech savvy. <laughs> I've seen all the different things you do with your blog and that type. Yeah, I, I have. I, I really love using the web so that I'm not just Nashville based. I have students all over the world, including India and uh, from India to the Bahamas, you know, uh, and all places in between, Australia to, to to Ireland and Canada, and uh, you know, and in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I love being able to reach across the ocean by using the web. I've got a blog that's got almost a, a, over a, a half a million views by now, and I find I'm finding I'm able to reach out and share what I know about the voice with people that you, you just couldn't do that without the, the wow wow web. So. I, I love it. I, I love it, and I use Facebook a, a, just a ton. Judy Rodman Voice is is my Facebook page. Uh, so that the technology of the of the web, and Skype and Google Plus and Google Hangouts and <laughs> and I mean I used to just do it on the phone, but it's really nice to be able to mm -hmm. see see <laughs> the expressions too. Yeah. So. And that's the background. And I I also. Uh, like uh, being able to do like I, I podcasts and things like that. Mm -hmm. I've got some some low tech sort of things. I have this. I'll show you this one piece of gear I, I've got that I re record a lot with. The Zoom. Let's put this back in. It's called. Oh, oh, Zoom, uh, H four N recorder, and I I use that a lot with my students with vocal exercises. Yeah, um, it makes it so much easier to share now. Yeah. Email to them or use Drive yeah. or any of those things where I'll burn it. Burn it. To... I'll burn it to a CD, which I've got to, and or I'll email it to them if. Uh, if they need need me to do that, yeah, and uh, songwriting too. I do a lot of songwriting still, and uh, of course that's uh, wonderful to be able to mm -hmm. use MP3 like that as well. But then I have to say, there's nothing like vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> I still yeah. have some. I still have some people that want to c record vinyl, and I just love that. Oh, that's awesome. I I know. I mean, you, you think most <laughs> students now they don't even know what vinyl is or cassette or an eight track. <laughs> they, think, they, think they think it's a cheap rocking chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, unfortunately, I know you have uh, another lesson you have to get to. Yeah. Uh, real Difference. soon. So, um, how? Yeah, how uh, uh, Whoops, say, you Rockman, if they want to take lessons with you, if they want to find out uh, about all the interesting things you're doing. Nick? Nick, with you. Nick, uh, I, I'm sorry I lost you. I think it was Wi-Fi problems. I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Yeah. Um, if our listeners wanted to connect with you, follow, learn all these great things you're sharing with us, what's the best way they can do that? You know what? The simplest thing is to go to judyrodman.com and hit contact. Great. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you. I thank you. I have learned so much, and I want to uh, order some things. And I know what my summer plans are. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Uh, I'm sure my our listeners will let us know. Oh, Judy's, Judy's <laughs> techniques have <laughs> helped you. <laughs> we really appreciate it. And, um, Here to be a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to thank you for connecting with us. And, um, oh, congratulations and I, on the show. It's wonderful. Well, well, appreciate thank you. And I think, And thank you for reminding us, I think. It is some, I think one of the great things I've picked up from the chatting with you is the knowledge about who are you connected to, who are you communicating to. I mean, that's so much theater storytelling. Um, and all the arts are in a way about that. I thank you for reminding us about that. Because it, You're so welcome. It's a, it's a such a simple thing, but it is so powerful because if you, if you get that in your head, it, it makes everything so much easier and, yeah. and makes telling the story that much more. Right. right. And we just have to remember that and not get stuck in all the details sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I guess I've just come off a show that was definitely <laughs> Into the Woods is not a walk in the park. So. <laughs> um, and so, and I did, of course, remind them that. And I remember, you know, saying that to them in one of those pep talks we like to give as directors. But um, it is about this communicating and connecting. So, right. I um, right. want to thank you again for taking time to join us. I really appreciate it. And uh, we will talk with everyone next week. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you, Nick.